Yo, what's up guys, it's me Zachly and welcome to day 10 of the 2017-2018 NBA season. So the Milwaukee Bucks need a guy like Eric Bledsoe. That's the main takeaway I had from yesterday. During the Celtics Bucks game where they were playing on that Bucks retro mecha court. By the way, that court is absolute fire. It looks real nice. Anyways, the game was essentially Giannis versus Kyrie and Horford. The Celtics started Horford at the four last night, mainly because he is the Celtics player best equipped to guard Giannis on the Kumpo. Tatum might be good for a rookie, but with how Giannis has been playing this year, the last thing you would want to do is have him try and guard the Greek Freak. And putting Horford on Giannis worked. No, Horford didn't completely stop Giannis on the Kumpo, but he did force him to have his worst game of the season, which by most people's standards is still a really good game. 28 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, but he finally shot under 50% from the field. 10 of 21 shooting, barely under 50%. And while Horford did as good of a job as you can do defending Giannis, he also was a huge impact on the other end as well. 27 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists, while Kyrie Irving also had his best game of the season scoring 24 points, Celtics get the 96 to 89 win. So after starting off the season 0 and 2, they are now 3 and 0. Back to the main topic of this video though, why the Bucks need to trade for Eric Bledsoe. It should be pretty obvious. They need another guy who can make plays. Right now, the Milwaukee Bucks solely live and die by Giannis, and he has been able to get them to a three and two record so far this season. But if the Bucks want to take the next step, they need more. When Jabari Parker comes back, if he is anywhere near as good as he was last year, then that will help out for sure. But even then, they will still need that secondary playmaker, and Parker is more of a complimentary player I'd say. I feel like more than anything last year Parker was benefiting a lot from playing alongside Giannis. He's not a guy that you can throw the ball to and have him run an offense. That's why they need a guy like Eric Bledsoe. And word has it that they're still in the running to land Bledsoe. Only thing is that the Suns want Malcolm Brogdon in any trade involving Eric Bledsoe. And Brogdon is a guy who every team would love to have. He knows his role and is really good at it. He can catch and shoot. He's hitting 50% of his shots from three this year. He can make cuts to the rim. And if you really, really are desperate enough for some offense, he can set himself up for a shot. And then he's also proving that he's going to be a rugged defender on the perimeter in the NBA as well. But I think a trade centered on him for Bledsoe is something the Bucks have to pull the trigger on. Look, if I'm a Milwaukee and I see what Giannis has been doing by himself so far this year, I'm going to do everything in my power to upgrade the talent around him as fast as possible. And Brockton is good, but of course Bledsoe is better. So that's an upgrade. You know, he's a guy that can run the offense when the defense is too locked in on Giannis or when Giannis goes to the bench. And then he's still a really good defender for a guard, so you really don't lose much there in terms of comparing to Brogdon either. And the whole reason for this is I think the Bucks will be trying to make the Eastern Conference Finals this year. And now they don't necessarily need Eric Bledsoe to do that. It could be possible with the team they have right now if Parker comes back healthy that they make the Eastern Conference Finals. But it's also very possible that Giannis by himself won't be enough to get the Bucks past the second round just yet. If the Bucks get Bledsoe though, I think they instantly become the favorites to challenge LeBron in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. And that's important because Giannis is a superstar now. Anytime you have a superstar like Giannis on your team, you officially entered your window to try and start winning championships. Bledsoe isn't the final piece that the Bucks need to win a championship, but he's a step in the right direction. And the longer they wait, the less championship opportunities they will have. Crazy conspiracy theory idea here. What if DeMarcus Cousins goes back to the Sacramento Kings this summer? Like imagine this, the Kings and Cousins were both in cahoots and the whole trade me for a bunch of assets so when I come back, we will have better players thing. They basically trade DeMarcus Cousins for De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, and Justin Jackson, and then they're also gonna get more in the draft next year, and then Cousins comes back since he loves the city so much. You have all that young talent plus DeMarcus Cousins. Maybe they can make some things happen in a few years, but nah, that most likely isn't happening. But he did go back for the first time since he was traded yesterday, the Kings even went as far as to make a whole welcome back video for him and everything. That was nice. You know, they sent out a nice warm welcome and he thanked them by absolutely demolishing them last night. 41 points, 23 rebounds, and 6 assists for DeMarcus Cousins. I just don't understand how he can be averaging 33 points, 14 rebounds, 
2.8 blocks and basically five assists per game. Did you guys hear those numbers? 33 points. 14 rebounds, basically three blocks and five assists per game. And then on top of that, you also have Anthony Davis averaging similar numbers and the Pelicans are still trash. How does that make sense? That being said, the Pelicans did end up with the win yesterday though, because mainly of DeMarcus Cousins. But I guess other than Cousins, you had Drew Holiday chip in 20 points and Jameer Nelson give them 18 off the bench. The Aaron Fox at 14 off the bench for Sacramento and 114 to 106 was the final score. It's still too early. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to jinx it, but the Clippers got another win last night. It's like every year, they start off the season looking like they could be legit threats in the Western Conference, and then a few games later, they are right back to their old ways, and everyone just says typical Clippers. But that doesn't mean that I can't say that they've been playing really good basketball so far. Blake Griffin has been putting in work. We always talk about Kawhi coming back much better every single year, adding a new element to his game every single year. But no one wants to talk about Blake Griffin, who has literally done the exact same thing. I know y'all remember when Griffin came into the league. All he was good for was catching lobs and selling tickets. Outside of five to seven feet away from the rim, the dude was completely useless. Now, you got him out here crossing people up, running offenses, creating his own shot off the dribble, and hitting game-winning threes. That's right. Blake Griffin with the Clippers down two, no time left in the game, knocks down the three to get the Los Angeles Clippers the 104 to 103 win over Portland and remain undefeated on the year. And that's the main thing that Griffin added to his game this year, a consistent three point shot. He hit the occasional three last year, but it wasn't a big part of his game. That's different this year. He's attempting basically six threes a game now and hitting 43% of them. Dude can shoot 26 points, nine rebounds, four and a half assists per game for Griffin. Now, I don't think he gets enough respect for how much he has grown as a player. Well, I mean, someone had to win, right? Like, I don't even think if I was the most die hard of Bulls or Hawks fan that I could have persuaded myself to watch this game last night. Look, if you're watching the Bulls, it's like, all right, I'll get to watch the other team play some good basketball and then also watch Laurie Marketing play. It's watchable. If you're a Hawks fan, it's like, uh, well, actually, if you're a Hawks fan, I really just have no clue why you will be watching this team play this year. But that being said, when both these teams play each other, then you have one of the worst games of the century in the making. But like I said, someone had to win, and that team last night was the Chicago Bulls as they got their first win of the season, 91-86. to Marketing didn't shoot the ball as well as he had been in previous games, but still had a pretty good game with 14 points and 12 rebounds. So Marco Bellinelli, who is arguably the Hawks' best player since Schroeder is out, had 23. Last game of the night, looked like it was going to be a blowout at halftime. Grizzlies were up 54 to 35, but sometimes what happens when you have a big lead like that, especially going into halftime, is the game seems easy, you get relaxed, let your foot off the brake, let your guard down, and let the other team right back into the game. And that's exactly what happened last night, as Dallas came roaring back to start the third quarter to make a game out of it from here on out. And the Mavs even had a chance to tie the game and force overtime with three seconds left but Dennis Smith Jr's last second shot didn't fall and Memphis wins 96 to 91. Gasol has been scoring and rebounding a bit more than he usually does this year. He had 25 points and 13 rebounds on the night is averaging 25 and 10 on the year while Mike Conley chipped in 22. Barnes also had 22 for Dallas. That wraps up all the action from last night. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by following the link down in the description box below. Just remember that only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected Russell Westbrook and his 28 points, 16 assists, and 10 rebounds as your player of the day. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for more daily NBA highlights. And also stay tuned for the daily NBA news coming out later today. And I'll see you guys then. Peace!